What's up everyone, welcome to Heroes Avenue, my name is Darren, and yes, I am back in the Bay, I'm back in my house, back for Comic Con, and oh man, I had so much fun in those two days I was there. I was only there from Friday and Saturday, you could catch my vlog right here. Um, but yeah, I uh, just I just before I get started with the news, I just want to give my overall thoughts on San Diego Comic Con, and Comic Con was definitely uh, a place to be at this year. It was super fun. I mean, it wasn't as good as the as the previous years, just because you know DC and Marvel, you know they bur they both weren't there at the same time, just Marvel. So it felt a little bit it felt a little bit lopsided, but still, it had I had a great time. Um, if it really felt like if this year at Comic Con that they really focus on um, the convention floor rather than you know focusing on the panels uh, because a lot of times I mean you could just spend one day one day like just exploring the floor and um, and that's pretty much it like you could you, once you explore the floor I mean that's all you can like you pretty much seen comic-con and you don't have to really visit the floor again and then you could just go on to you know lining up for hall h or going to other ballrooms to look at other panels um and you know there are things outside of the con where you could still have fun but it seems like this time this year seems like they were really focused on the floor you know they had different things every day uh, I, I mean Nickelodeon they had a really good presence there if you guys saw my Spongebob uh, contest with me and my girlfriend uh, that was super fun and it just seemed like there was so much so much spirit in terms of uh, you know the what every vendor had to bring uh, every vendor there they really came out strong and really brought some really cool stuff uh, I was really disappointed on you know the freebies that they normally give out uh, a lot of you know every year they do give out hella free freebies but this time they seem to they seemed really stingy about it um, and yeah overall it, it was a fun experience I'm sad I didn't get into Hall H um, and I'm sad I didn't get into the the Marvel autograph signing that autograph signing line was in like crazy it was so crazy um, be like for example bef I know I'm kind of rambling but before I get started uh, this this all this like Avengers Endgame signing was so crazy that you know they told everyone to line up at 9 15 a.m. and people were lining up at 9 a.m. and there was a giant crowd and a security was like you know it's like this is not a line there's no line there is no line people were still lining up they give they gave zero F's of what they said and uh, it became a fire hazard and people were getting into fights and it was insane. Uh, eventually they gave away, you know, uh, a, like tickets. Yeah, yeah, it was basically a raffle to get into this autograph signing and just getting the raffle ticket was just hard uh, within itself and uh, they gave random raffle tickets to people secretly and it was it was so messed up I, I hated that part of it um, those are pretty much impossible to get into uh, unless you're really persistent and you're just like standing your ground but I'm not that type of guy uh, I wasn't that serious about it um, but uh, yeah that was pretty crazy but yeah uh, especially the cosplays this year I think a lot of people didn't go as hard as they used to um, people that I were with, that I was with, they're saying the same thing too. Like there wasn't that many like great cosplays as previous years. But I mean, the cosplays that were there were really, really great uh, and very unique and uh, well thought out. Um, but yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on this year's Comic Con. If you guys were there, let me know in the comments below. Um, I had a great time. I wish I was there much longer. Two days is, is has been the shortest amount of time I've ever been at Comic Con. I'm usually there from preview night, which is Wednesday, all the way to Sunday. Uh, but I couldn't get all the days off. So two days was, uh, was only for this year. Hopefully I get to go all the days next year. All right, so moving on, we have a lot of things to talk about for this news uh, because Marvel and DC, they both have been uh, coming out with rumors and news lately, especially with you know what what happened with the, the slate over ca at Comic-Con. And uh, I just want to do a quick announcement. I just want to talk about this real quick that uh, Avengers Endgame is, has, is now the biggest box office of all time. Um, they beated um, Avatar, James, James Cameron's Avatar, and which is an incredible success uh, for comic book lovers in general. Huge success. I never thought we would ever be at this point in my life uh, where Avengers is leading the box office in worldwide success or worldwide box office. 
it's in crazy what they've accomplished um and i'm always do you know i'm always rooting for dc just because they're at this point they're they are the underdogs so i'm always gonna root for them but you know i have so much love for mcu they've accomplished so much and they're they keep on expanding they keep on you know surprising the audience and we never know what they are gonna do even though we think we know even though we we like we could kind of try to predict what they're gonna do next they always end up surprising us at the end of it all. So congrats to you guys, everyone at the Marvel team. You guys did an incredible job um, and you guys are doing so much for the comic book community and I love that. All right, so let's move on because this DC news is crazy. So this news is coming from Cosmic Book News and it looks like they're reporting all this, all this news on today. And they're pretty much saying that JJ Abrams is going to be directing a Superman movie and a Green Lantern movie. And uh, the reports are saying that Abrams is looking to cast a younger Superman to be to be near um, Robert Pattinson's age, and this is this is kind of nuts because one Henry Cavill is only three years older than Robert Pattinson. Uh, Henry Cavill is only 36 years old. Robert Robert Pattinson's only 33 years old. But I understand the difference. I mean, if you cast a younger uh, looking, just a younger looking person. Um, that's maybe around Robert Pattinson's age. I mean, it's he. I mean, he. You have to get someone that's, you know, well shaven, um, uh, that looks somewhat similar to Henry Cavill. Um, if 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 they are gonna make Henry Cavill canon at this point, that is the question, right? Is Henry Cavill Superman gonna be canon in the DCU, or is it gonna be totally different? Is this gonna be another Elseworlds story? So that's a big question within itself. Um, but if you're gonna cast someone younger. That's gonna be hard to do because this same report they're saying that everyone at Comic Con and it also looks at I think this assumes Warner Brothers that they that they know that it's gonna be really hard to replace Henry Cavill. I think everyone can agree that Henry Cavill is a perfect casting for Superman. And I mean Henry Cavill still has one contract left, um, has one move has one more movie to do in his contract. So um, it could be J.J. Abrams' movie. It could not, who knows, but I personally don't think, my thoughts are that J.J. Abrams, you know, he's gonna actually direct a Green Lantern movie and he's going to maybe executive or produce a Superman movie, whoever, and then he bring on one of his, you know, his close friends that are directors onto that Superman project and um, team up with that guy. And I think, I don't think he's going to I think I think more I think his suit is more in the space world so I think he's more of going to you know dive into the Green Lantern universe and then bring I think I if, if he's gonna direct Green Lantern if this is real if this is if this is real because we know that cosmic uh, book news uh, I mean they could be a hit or miss right uh, but if this is real I believe that <laughs> because a lot of directors do this already um, JJ Abrams gonna bring John Boyega as John Stewart. I think he's going to do that, and then uh, it could be maybe Tom Cruise becoming Hal Jordan. Who knows? Um, but <laughs> I think John Boyega is gonna be our, our our John Stewart. I definitely think that, um, and I don't think he's gonna direct a Superman movie. I think I know that he has prior interest. I know he wrote a script, or he was going to direct a Superman movie for himself, Superman Flyboy. Um, but I think his passion is more in the in the uh, space realm, and obviously I know I know Superman could be in the space, but I don't think that's where that's, I don't think that's the direction he he wants to go in. I think he wants to direct a Green Lantern movie um, because that's definitely needs some revitalization, right? I think I think what J.J. Abrams is is great at doing is revitalizing a a franchise, making it better. I mean, we. I mean, we we saw that with us. I mean, this is definitely debatable, right? Um, but I mean, see what he done. See what he did with Star Trek. See what he did with Star Wars. I mean, he. Whatever you guys feel, those those movies have been critically acclaimed. Um, they, to me personally, I'm not a huge Star Trek guy, um, and I loved what he did with Star Trek. Um, I loved what he did with the Star Wars movie and. Which is why I feel like Green Lantern is the perfect fit for him. But regardless of what you feel, I mean, they are critically acclaimed, right? So, um, so there you go. I, I definitely feel like that's it's gonna go that route. Um, but I do feel like Henry Cavill should play Superman. 
I definitely feel like they should just keep him. That dude loves, that dude loves the character so much that I mean, he went on a recent interview and he said, like, he awkwardly said that he will be uh, Superman because it's still, it's still Rocky. It's still he doesn't know what Warner Brothers is gonna do. They might phase him out. They might not. Who knows? Uh, I gave, I gave, a, I made a video stating that he, he's not our, he's not going to be our Superman anymore uh, because you know DC is going through a, a different direction. Um, and I still feel that, but I do have hope that whatever JJ Abrams comes out with, I do hope that he has plans of keeping Henry Cavill, maybe writing him in there um, because I, I don't want him to go. That is a perfect cast that, perfect casting choice that a lot of us cannot live without. Um, even though I'm sure they could find someone else, but damn, that is a perfect casting choice. Um, Henry Cavill as Superman. So. It's gonna be a hard bar to to um, to cast um, a high bar to cast. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So whatever you guys feel about this, uh, for, about the J.J. Abrams story, let me know in the comments below how you feel about that. Because I want to get into this other topic where it's a Marvel one, because it looks like um, Cosmic Book News also has um, stories on on uh, the Fantastic Four's origin in the MCU. And I know that the Fantastic Four has not, was not um, you know, this, the the title was not released on the Phase Four slate, but Kevin Feige has uh, has confirmed that they're going to be in the Phase Five along with mutants. They're calling uh, mutants not X Men at this point. But Cosmic Book is saying that the Fantastic Four, the way they get into the uh, the MCU, is that they're they're going to do something similar to um, similar to uh, the the Quantum Realm, but it's going to be with a negative zone. So. In this report, they're saying that they, they have a close source that they're saying that um, the Fantastic Four group are going to be from the 60s and they're going to be trapped in the negative zone and when they come out of the negative zone, it's going to be current day and they're going to not be aged one bit. Um, and so that is pretty a uh, crazy idea, crazy report. Um, I'm kind of 50-50 on that. Uh, one because I love the fact that uh, you know they are the you know they already have their powers so that means we're gonna take less time with their with the origin because a lot of us man we already know how they get their or we already know how they get their powers we don't have to go through that again but um, if they have a different spin on the origin I definitely want to know how that how that uh, you know came about um, and um on the other side I kind of do want to see how you know how this family member. How, the, how their chemistry is and how they came together um, and how you know how did you know Johnny Storm get into the the project is he a scientist is he not um, and I want to just know I just want to know the dynamic with within the group before they get their powers so I so I understand the arc from before and after so I definitely want to see that happen um, but I'm 50 50 on that uh, this is not totally confirmed so we don't even know if this is real or not so take this with a grain of salt um, but I do I am excited to see the Fantastic Four be done right with the Marvel uh, under the Marvel label over at Disney. Um, so I want to know your guys' thoughts on that. And then moving on, I'm gonna jump towards the DC TV verse for a moment because this Crisis Infinity on Earth event is a little bit crazy. Um, so Cosmic Book News are also saying I think this is Cos Cosmic Book News. Um, Regardless, <laughs> there's another rumor that's saying that the crisis on on Infinite Earth over at the CW is gonna be con is gonna ha have some connectivity with the DCEU and uh, the DC Universe app with uh, two Titans characters. So this report is saying that um, the the event over at CW is gonna have is gonna have actually Henry Cavill appear on the show or maybe show a glimpse of him maybe from from his movies um, and they're gonna show two characters from Titans but we don't know who yet um, and that is a little crazy and it's it's di way different from you know what Marvel's doing with you know with their MCU and with their um, with their Disney plus service shows it's that is crazy that's definitely one upping Marvel uh, I mean, it doesn't mean that they're better, but it's definitely one one upping or being different from what they're doing right now, um, and and it definitely connects everything together. I think if you're gonna have a multiverse, and you're gonna recognize different universes, this is where you're gonna do it. I think this is the perfect time. On top of you know, you know, um, 
you know, uh, showing Brandon Routh as, you know, as an older Superman from Kingdom Come. Doing that as well is incredible. It's just a mind-blowing comic book nerd dream come true. Um, and CW is the place to do it because we all know the movie verse is not going to do that shit. So uh, CW, I hope you guys do it. I hope this is real news because man, we this there's other rumors that Tom Welling and Linda Carter are going to reprise their roles as Superman and Wonder Woman. And, and for you guys, I'm a huge Smallville fan. I, I was watching Smallville, Smallville before Green uh, Green Arrow, and I followed that series from when I was a kid all the way till you know I graduated high school. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's it's gonna be a big event that you guys cannot miss. I know a lot of you guys probably fell off the wagon because you know Arrow started becoming really crappy, and a lot of you guys aren't in love with the Super Supergirl show. Me as well, you know. Um, <laughs> but this this event you cannot miss. You cannot miss. You could probably skip a lot of the the fluff shows, uh, fluff episodes. But this this is this year's Arrow. Since this is gonna be the last season, it's gonna only be I think about ten episodes long. Um, you definitely have to watch those episodes. If you guys fell off the arrow wagon, definitely jump back on just to watch the final season and just to see how this all plays out because I'm sure it's going to be super epic. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that. If you guys think this is true or not, let me know. And uh, if you, how do you guys feel about um, the CW finally connecting the multiverse all together with the different streaming, uh, with the you know, DC Universe platform with the DCEU and with the DC, uh, DC TV CW shows. All right, so the last story that I want to talk about is pretty much an open-ended story. Um, and it's pretty much talking about how Mahershala Ali is cast as Blade in the MCU when he already played someone else over at Luke Cage. And does that affect the, the Netflix Marvel heroes such as Daredevil, Luke Cage, um, Iron Fish and Jessica Jones and uh, you know a lot of us can, can look at this as yes they're done Marvel is going to ignore everyone over at Netflix because Mahershala Ali uh, did play a villain in Luke Cage and now he's gonna be a hero over at uh, at, at the MCU and that's too you know you know they both play he played two pivotal characters and you know people are gonna get confused so let me just tell you this if you guys think that. Um, so one, a lot of people did not like the Luke Cage uh, first season. So that's the, you know, that's the season he was in. And a lot of people didn't watch that show. And so it's easy, it's easy for Marvel to really disregard what happened there. Um, and as well, you know, this is not the first time we've seen this. Um, actually, Alfre, I think that's her name, Alf, Alfre Woodard. Uh, she played Mariah over at Luke Cage. She also played Miriam over at Civil War. Uh, she was actually the, the woman that was waiting at the elevator with Tony Stark telling her that her son died when they were fighting Ultron. Um, and I mean, there you go right there. And no one got confused. I mean, her character at Civil War during Civil War is definitely, you know, unrecognizable. I mean, it's forgettable uh, role, right? Um, but that does prove that you know marvel is is open to you know having two characters in on both platforms um and it's, there's nothing wrong with that and so i mean i don't think that i don't think we'll ever see luke cage again in the mcu at all um but i do i do imagine you know daredevil coming to the mcu if there's anyone to to make the jump from the mc from the netflix verse to the mcu is definitely daredevil so allowing you know, Mahershala Ali to play on both platforms, um, I don't think it's gonna do any harm at all. So uh, if you guys are on that fence, I just wanna point it out there. But if you guys are, you know, disagreeing with me, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know your guys' thoughts. And that's gonna be it for today's video. It was a long, a long list of stories I wanted to touch on, um, but I wanna know your guys' thoughts on all of this. Let me know in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys again, bye.